This is a counter circuit with a VFD tube that counts how often I push a button. But why does this count more strokes than I actually made? The reason are bouncing contacts. An oscilloscope reveals a disaster. These nasty glitches are the result of the contact swinging back and forth until it finds its final position. Even though this only takes a few milliseconds, it's still slow enough to confuse the following circuit. So how can we mitigate this and get a clean transition? Debouncing is the way to go. But how can this best be done? I will show you in this video. A common way to do so is to suppress these extra pulses with an RC element. A 10K resistor and a 100 nano capacitor are a good choice there. Technically, we have a low pass filter that filters out the high frequencies of the glitches and lets through the low frequency of the transition only. And the result is a charging curve of a capacitor. Can we feed this into our counter input now? The answer is yes. It works fine and the glitches are gone, but the solution does not work with all digital circuits. Now I try a 14-17 decade counter with some LEDs attached. Each push should turn on the next LED in the row, but actually it works more like a randomizer. Why does it work with one chip and not the other? Take a look at the definition of logic levels. There's an undefined range between what the input detects as low and what it detects as high. If you look at the input voltage over time, you can see that it stays in the undefined range for a while. And during that time the clip itself is oscillating and producing its own glitches. In this case a capacitor makes it even worse. Any idea on how to overcome this? One solution is to use a Schmidt trigger. This keeps the output level while the input level is in the undefined region. This way you get a clean transition. Check out the 4026 datasheet. You can see that the clock input is already realized as a Schmidt trigger. And that is why it works. The 4017 on the other hand has only a simple inverter as clock input. So we need to add an external Schmidt trigger to it. One like the 7414 for example. This contains 6 inverting Schmidt triggers so it can debounce up to 6 buttons at a time. However with only one button to debounce this chip might be a bit oversized. So there is an alternative circuit with a 555 timer. It's very simple and needs no external components. Or you can wire the 555 as a monoflop. A monoflop changes its output value with the first edge of the input and ignores later transitions for some time. For the sake of completeness I'd like to mention the debouncing with an SR flip-flop. However this solution requires a push button with a toggle contact. But it is also a very convenient and effective way. Most projects these days are using microcontrollers. They have the advantage that debouncing can easily be done by software, so the button can be connected between an input pin and ground. I have six VFD tubes and their drivers on a circuit board. The Arduino sends them the value to display as an ASCII string over the I2C protocol. And it also does the multiplexing of the tubes. Check out this video to learn more about VFD tubes and how to control them. I put this circuit on a PCB from PCBWay. To get your custom made board, go to the PCBWay homepage, enter a size of 100 by 100 mm and how many you want and optionally solder mask and silk screen color. Now you have several shipping options to choose from depending on your budget and time frame. Then upload the zip file with the Gerbers and after submitting your order you will receive your board soon. They look and feel awesome. Look at its precision and they cost only 5 bucks. I will use these in my upcoming projects as well. Then I will talk about them in more detail. So subscribe and enable notifications to not miss it. PCBWay makes PCB assembly fun and easy and if you don't feel like swinging the soldering iron yourself, feel free to check out their assembly service. But now back to the topic. I want to connect the button to the pin 2 of Arduino and write a sketch that counts the button presses. First I define the input pin to which the button is connected. In the setup function I configure it as an input with the internal pull-up enabled. This way I can connect the button directly. 
And I also initialize my VFD tubes there. In the loop function I call digital read to read the state of the button. With a pull-up resistor enabled the function returns false when the button is pressed and true when it's released. Just for readability I invert the value so that the value becomes true when the button is pressed and false otherwise. I also need a variable that stores the previous state. This can either be a global or a static variable. So when the key is pressed but was not before, I increment a counter variable and convert it to a string. Finally I save the state of the button and send the string with the counter value to the tubes. This still does not work properly as you may have guessed. So I add another if statement that checks if the button status has changed. If it has, it delays the program until we can say for sure that the input level has stabilized. My debouncing routine now works properly. Really? Well, the VFD show function has to be called cyclically to multiplex the tubes. But the delay function now slows this down. So use delay only if the Arduino has nothing else to do while delaying. Instead you'd better use the millis function. Every time when the input status sta changes, I store the milliseconds since the Arduino was powered on in another static variable. Then I add a third condition that is met when more than 100 milliseconds have passed since the last stage change. And as you can see this routine no longer blocks the Arduino, so the tubes are multiplexed without any visible delay. We can take even more load of the loop function by moving everything to an interrupt handler. However, there is a much easier way to debounce the button. Did you know that there is an easy to use Arduino library for debouncing? It can be easily installed using the library manager. Of course, the first thing we need to do is include the header file and get an instance to the button class. We can set the input pin the button is connected to with attach. The second parameter defines whether or not to use the external pull-up resistor. Notice what? Attach replaces the Arduino pin mode function there. Then set the debounce interval. 5 milliseconds is a good value. And this is where to set the input level that is to be considered as a pressed button. In the loop function the state of the button object must be updated cyclically by its update method. The last thing we need to do is to check if the button is pressed and do our business if it is. You see, the library does a really good job with only a few lines of code. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tech stuff, subscribe and enable notifications. That way you will never miss a thing. Also consider supporting the channel through Patreon or by becoming a channel member. Any support is appreciated.